What's up guys, this episode we're going to be talking about Rails 6's new action mailbox functionality that allows you to accept inbound emails into your Rails app and then process them. So action mailbox is really cool and an example of what you can use it for is GitHub reply by email for issues and pull requests. So whenever you get notifications from GitHub, it says reply to this email directly and it allows you to uh, add a comment from your email without ever logging into GitHub. So how does that work? Well, the magic happens when you hit reply, it goes to this email address that you see right here. Where did that come from, you might ask? Well, uh, the reply to header is actually what defines that. And you'll see this email address is rail slash rail, so it makes a friendly name and then the email address right here is where the magic really kind of happens. So this is reply plus an ID, which represents that pull request at reply.github.com. So that reply.github.com is a subdomain used entirely for processing emails for replies. And that's basically what you'll have to set up in SendGrid or Postmark or whatever tool that you're going to use. You'll use a subdomain for processing these and we'll talk about that a little bit in the future. Then in Action Mailbox, you will be able to go and match those email addresses, find whoever sent it, look up their user account, then pull out the ID from the email that they sent it to, and then you can look up the pull request or issue or whatever your model might be to go and add that content to your database. So it's pretty straightforward, but let's dive into building an example. So let's create a new Rails 6 app. We're gonna call it Mailboxer very creatively. And this is going to be um, setting up everything for us, but we are going to install Action Mailbox next, which will also install Active Storage. So the thing that happens behind the scenes for us that we don't really have to pay attention to is that Active Storage is the storage for these emails that come in. So whenever an email comes into Rails, it will save it and keep track of it and whether or not it's been processed. Then it will load an active job to go process it and then delete that email when it's done, but it will keep track of the ID and the checksum so that this is a way for it to deduplicate. So if you ever got the same email twice, it would not process it two times and create duplicates. It would only process it once. So that's pretty handy. So let's go in and run Rails Action Mailbox colon install to go ahead and install it. And this is going to generate our two migrations for Active Storage, Action Mailbox, and it's going to go and create an application mailbox. So while we're here, let's Rails generate a scaffold for user, which will have a name and an email. Let's generate a scaffold for discussion as well, which will have a title, and this will be kind of like an issue or a pull request or something with comments. And then we'll generate a scaffold for comment, which is a user references, a discussion references, and some body text. And that will be what will take the email contents and put it into the content, the comment body. So with that, we can run Rails DB migrate to create all of that and we can open up our application. Now if we pull up our schema, you can see the model for Action Mailbox. This is basically the status, whether or not it's pending, processing, or finished, um, and then the message ID and the checksum for the deduplication stuff. And then active storage, of course, and our other user models that we just created. Now, um, the other file that it created for us is under app mailboxes application mailbox and this file is where you define your routes for the emails. You're going to match against the email address and determine which processing method you want which is called a mailbox. So here you can set up a routing for all the messages to go to say like a replies mailbox um, but you can also use a regex here and say routing and define how you want that to work. So maybe you want the reply plus dot plus so like a bunch of characters at least one um, and then reply dot github dot com if you wrote this regex it would match the one that we saw there on um, the github email 
And one of the tools that I find really useful for this is Rubular. You'll see here that I have it set up with that regular expression that I just wrote and the example um, from GitHub. And then I have another one that has a save, um, maybe more like Basecamp save forwarding, and this doesn't match. So that's one of the things that you can do is just change the format of the email address people reply to and then put it in different buckets for processing. So it's really handy to have in Action Mailbox. So let's comment these out um, because we're not going to use them, but let's create a mailbox. So we'll run Rails generate mailbox replies, and we'll use this one to add replies to a discussion. So this is where we're going to be defining that. And inside of here, we have a process method, and basically we have access to the mail object, the actual email that was given to us, and the inbound email, which is the active storage record, so that the action mailbox record rather. Um, this is the action mailbox inbound email record out of the database. So if you ever need access to that, you can use inbound email or you can use this, which is a mail object, to actually grab, say, the subject line out of the email itself. So we'll leave these as comments here for your reference because I found myself forgetting them. It's probably going to be handy to just have those as notes in here. Now, once you're in here, you can go and process that email. So what do you need to do? First thing is you need to load up the user record from the database. So um, one thing you can do to make this a little bit uh, more organized is to find the user. And we'll have at user, and this will be by email. And we want to grab the email uh, from address. So whoever sent the email, we want to look that user up because we are trying to create a record for them. They replied by email. And if we don't find the user, we don't want to really process this. And so we can immediately return from this if user.nil. So we can make sure that there is uh, a user. You could also do unless user is present, however you want to do that works for you. Um, and another option you have here for handling things is you have before processing callbacks you can set up. So you can say ensure user and define a method here like ensure user where you can say if user is nil, then we want to bounce with an email. So the way that you would do this is you would create like a user mailer and say there's a missing user inbound email. You can pass in that database record for the inbound email and then send that email um, a response. So this is something you might find useful where you can go ahead and send an email back to whoever sent the email in and say, hey, we're sorry, but it doesn't look like you have an account. Um, make sure that you're sending us you know, an email from an account that does exist. Whatever email you use to sign up for our service, use that one. So this is a cool way of handling things and this bounce with will handle the stop processing and all of that and send an email um, as a response. So that's pretty cool um, and a good option, but we're gonna leave it as simple like this because we're not gonna bother setting up the user mailer. So we've got plenty of other things to do to process this. The next thing is we need to actually find our discussion from that email. So we're gonna look up the discussion at discussion, discussion.find, and we need to grab that ID somehow. And let's just say it's a discussion ID variable or method, and we'll define discussion ID right here. And we need to pull this out of the email address that was matched. So if we go to our application mailbox, remember that we have um, this right here. So we have our routing lines, so we need to set one of those up. So let's get this one, and we'll do the same format, but maybe, maybe let's make it a hyphen, and we'll organize this uh, a little bit differently. So we'll say reply hyphen, and this capture group um, at example.com, and those emails will be the only ones that we process. So currently, one of the design flaws maybe that I noticed was that when you're writing this, 
There's no way to figure out this capture group, which is often going to be used to look up the database record in your process here. So what we're going to do is actually take this regex line here, and we're going to say replies mailbox matcher, and we're going to define that here. So we're going to say matcher equals that regex. That way we can reuse the same regex in both places and we're going to use it to find that discussion ID. So mail.recipients will give us a list of an array of email addresses that that user sent to. In our case it probably is just one email address but we have to loop through it because it is an array and we want to just look and see if matcher.match on this uh, email recipient address um, and if it does we can say we have the recipient and we then need to find the ID out of that so we found the right one but we need to get that capture group out of it and we can do that by saying recipient matcher uh, comma one and that will run the regex against that and give us the first capture group back so this should return to us the database ID from that URL. So for example, we would send an email to reply1 at reply.example.com, and that should pull out this number one from there. So before we go down the tracks too far, I wanna mention that the mail gem is this mail object that you have to work with. The action mailbox stuff is built on top of this, and if you scroll down to reading an email in the docs here, you'll see what a mail object has access to. So you'll see all these different things like from, addresses, sender, and to, and so on. And this is the content of the email, and you can go and ask for different things. And you can also do multi-part emails. So if you have an HTML email, usually it comes with a plain text version as well. You might have images attached underneath and then referenced in the HTML, and it gets pretty complicated. So typically what happens is that applications like GitHub and Basecamp and so on will just take the plain text version of that email and embed that. So they don't worry about the HTML version because that can have CSS and all this extra stuff. And really they're trying to add comments that need to be just plain text. And so they strip all the HTML stuff out if they can and just go with the, um, the plain text version. So that's what we're gonna do here in our example. So what we need to do now that we have the discussion is go to the comments array and we don't have the has many comments set up just yet. So let's do that now. And we'll create the user as user and the body of this will be a mail.decode. And that's one of the methods that is mentioned here or decoded. Um, that is mentioned there. You can also check and see if it's multi-part and grab like the plain text version. Um, this example shows that there's a PDF version in that example. There's a lot of different ways to go and do this. So we're just gonna keep this very simple for now, but we'll talk more about that in a future episode on how to pull out content from emails because it can be pretty complicated. So with this comment created, we should be good to go. So we need to go and test this out. So let's boot up our Rails app. Let's go into Mailboxer, run our Rails server. And in users, let's go and create an account for myself, chris at gorails.com. Let's go to discussions and create a new discussion like action mailbox, hello world, create that. And on this page, we want to display any of the comments. So let's go ahead and update our discussion show HTML ERB. And we'll go in here and let's do it underneath this. Let's say H4 comments and at discussion dot comments. Uh, let's just render those out and we'll go to the comments comment dot HTML ERB file, app views, comments, comment.html.erb. In here, we'll just create a div. Let's have a strong that prints out the comment.user.name, strong, commented, and a BR, 
and we'll do a simple format for the comment dot body and close the div. So these will be really, really basic um, comments, but we will have some on the page and know if our code worked. So we're ready to test this out, and the easiest way to do this is to use the new Rails conductor for Action Mailbox. These are development URLs that are available in development, of course, and you can access these and actually run things against your Rails app without having to go to the console or do anything like that. So this is really cool. It will simulate sending an email to your Rails app, and you can say Rails, uh, you know, reply one at reply.example.com. We'll just put in some sort of subject and we'll say hello world um, from this and we'll deliver that inbound email. Now it also allows us to route this again. It says the status of it is pending and the full email source is included here for us. So we can see the content type of it and so on. And all of this is available and you can do more complex things like uh, actually view the other inbound emails in your app. So if you have one that comes in from another service, like you've set up SendGrid and NGROC and Local Tunnel or something, you can go and test that out. So if we pop into our discussions tab again and refresh, we don't see any new comments and we can take a look at the Rails logs and here you'll see where it begins processing the action mailbox routing job. And that is the job that is going to process these emails. And here you'll see that it updated to the pending state or the processing state. It went ahead and found the user, found the discussion, and it created the comment for us. So we know that is good and it has processed our email correctly. So if we go back to our discussion show, maybe we missed something here. And it looks like we did, we forgot to add the equals on our comment and we can refresh and we see that it's now available. So um, we have now processed an email by writing this action mailbox and that has gone ahead and routed it correctly and done everything that we need to make that work. Now one of the cool things that you can do is if you want you can use a tool like ngrok to expose your Rails app to the public internet and then you can go set up SendGrid to actually send emails to your development environment. And then you could go to like Gmail, send emails to your actual email address and route them to your local Rails app for testing. That's gonna be really nice because you can test more complex things and forward real emails that are like HTML and images embedded and all of that. Make sure that your mail processing code, like we're right now just using mail.decoded very simply. This may not be the best thing for your application, but it works for us in these simple plain text examples. So you can fiddle with this. I would highly encourage you to throw like a buy bug in here and just test it out and then poke around the, e the emails and the mail object because they're pretty complicated. And we're gonna talk more about processing HTML emails and storing them in rich text, uh, action text fields and uploading attachments and that sort of thing as well. But we'll do that in a future episode. So the last thing I wanna mention is the instructions here for setting up um, your email provider. So for example, with Postmark, you would set your ingress to postmark. You would want to do this in development if you want to test it out locally. Set up ngrok or local tunnel so it's available. And then the action mailbox ingress password is a secret password that postmark and your Rails app would know so that if any attacker tried to send over emails and send out or like post spam or something, um, that would not be possible because they wouldn't know the secret password. Then you just simply drop in the example URL here to postmark for the inbound webhook and you're good to go and all of that is set up. Some of these you do need to tell it to include the raw email um, because that is what's processed by the mail gem. It needs to know the raw email and that's what makes it kind of generic across all of these providers. If you can process the raw email similarly for all of them, you don't have to have a whole lot of different code to process each one of these providers. So that is a basic introduction to Action Mailbox. You can use it fairly easily to send out email notifications and then receive replies to those and put them in your app. So it's pretty cool and something we're gonna dive way more into depth with in future episodes. So if you guys wanna see more stuff, let me know in the comments below if you have ideas on uh, good use cases for this. I'd love to see those in the comments. Until then, I will talk to you guys later.
Peace.